Piffenville under 15s and Glen Torren under 15s met in a National League A fixture at the dub. Piffenville kicking off in their familiar red and Glen Torren in the green, red and black. In pleasant and dry playing conditions, both teams looked to keep the ball on the ground and it was the Glens that opened the scoring when a pinpoint through ball from midfield found Connor Falls who stayed calm under pressure and passed the ball home. 1-0 Glen Torren after only two minutes. Glen Torren kept the pressure on and great determination from Scott Rolston allowed another chance for Connor Falls, but he could only poke wide of the target on this occasion. This Conan McCauley corner for Criffenville caused problems, but this half volley didn't trouble Ryan McGrath in the Glen Torren goal. Glen Torren pressed for another goal and the shooting opportunity fell for Dan Kirk who couldn't keep his effort below the bar. Harry Wilson was fouled in the midfield for Glen Torren. Harry! Harry, From that free Wilson! kick the Glens doubled the lead and Connor Falls scored his second of the evening making it 2-0 on 14 minutes. Great pressure from Cliffenville's number 9 Aaron Pendergast almost allowed for a shot inside the area but the Glentorn keeper Ryan McGrath was sharp off his goal line. From McGrath's clearance it set up a Glentorn counter attacking move but Conan McCauley did well to clear the danger. Cliffenville kept the ball well in the midfield area patient in their play. Ethan Carey couldn't pick a pass to find a teammate and that almost led to a Glen Torn counter attack but strong defending from Aidan Lillis stopped that happening. Cliffenville were awarded a free kick and this long ball found Lamar Neeson who showed an incredible piece of skill inside the area from a tight angle and can count himself unlucky not to get on the score sheet. Cliffenville kept the pressure on and this long range dipping effort from Conan McCauley forced McGrath to tip it over the crossbar. Conan McCauley was having a great game and was in corner duty again and this time Glen Torn almost scored from a Cliftonville corner when Callum Marshall and Charlie Lindsay combined very well on the counter attack. Midway through the half Glen Torn rattled the crossbar when Callum Marshall tried his luck from distance and Cliftonville were able to run the ball out from the left back position. Nearing the end of the first half, Cliffenville put together some patient build up play, eventually allowing this fantastic well timed half volley to go just wide off the left post. Glen Torren's Charlie Lindsay was proving a threat. Neat football on the edge of the box worked the Cliftonville defence. Glen Torren kept possession and at the referee's half time whistle, the scoreline was Glen Torren 2, Cliftonville 0.
Criffinville kicked off the second half with work to do and gave the ball away on the edge of their own area. Great pressure from Corner Falls allowed an opportunity for the Grands, but the shot was just dragged the wrong side of the right post. Then came a fantastic opportunity for the Grands after great football from Jake Wallace. His lightning quick footwork allowed an opportunity for Callum Marshall, but Marshall fired hard and low, but wide off the post. From a Christopher Campbell back pass, Glentorn scored their third goal in the 52nd minute. A pinpoint cross from Joe Hopes found the lethal Callum Marshall, who made all three points secure. Charlie Lindsay teed up Dan Kirk for the next Glentorn shot, but Ross McAteer in the Cliftonville goal gathered it well. With darkness falling, Glentorn's number four Scott Rolston went on a mazy run and was fouled on the edge of the area. Up stepped Charlie Lindsay to fire in the free kick and make it 4-0 to Glentoran in the 63rd minute. To their credit, Criffinville never gave in and got on the score sheet in the 64th minute when Ethan Carey passed the ball into the bottom corner, much to the delight of his teammates and coaching staff. It was Glen Torren that had the last real opportunity of the night when Dylan Sloan tested the Cliftonville goalkeeper from the edge of the area. However, at full time it finished Grant Horn 4, Cliftonville 1. Yeah, we, we came up against a good team today who played really, really well. I thought our boys coped well with it. They defended their hearts out. We had a couple of wee chances in the first half, which was great to see. Got a goal in the second half, which is always good. And like you said, it, it gives us some stuff to go back on and work on in training. For me, Defensively, Oren McCart done a fantastic job. Um, three boys in midfield, Brody, Keelan and Ethan all worked their socks off in the first half of the game, which was great. They put in a super shift. Um, but yeah, they all, to be fair, the whole team was put in a really good shift tonight. Yes, Lamar's a super player. He's, he's a quick winger. He's got super, super feet. He had a great chance to get in. Unfortunately, the Glens keeper made a super save, which was one of our chances. But again, like you said, he's, he's a great booster ahead of him. He's a smashing player. Plans for the rest of the season, keep working, keep working hard in training, take it into games and try some new things and hopefully improve the team going forward. Yeah, happy enough for so am Stephen. Um, thought we did rightly um, in patches. Uh, we played uh, Balamina last week and it's definitely a different game today. Clemenville certainly gave us a, put us under a lot of pressure at, at times. They're a good side and a couple of talented players. I thought when we spoke with the coaches there at half time, we gave them too much time on the ball especially the boys in Cliftonville's wing, we let them turn at us and let us go at us. But once we created the chances, we should have probably scored a couple of more. But now Cliftonville had created a few chances of their own, like two, so it was a good enough game, but three points, we're happy enough for three points at the end of the day.